Hey guys, I literally just finished my last recording, so now I'm going to do a round two preview for San Jose versus Colorado. So going through the round, round, round one for both teams, so San Jose, their series went, right now, I'm just going to say, went seven, and it was an incredible game seven that mainly I did miss, which kind of sucks, but it was an incredible game seven. So San Jose won game one, five to two in San Jose. Ve Vegas then came back to San Jose five to three and won it to tie the series. Then Vegas won back-to-back -back games at home. Game three they won six to three, and game four they won five nothing. So they basically outscored them at home eleven to three. And then San and then San Jose was down three three one going back to San Jose. But San Jose had different like thoughts. Like they weren't gonna say, oh yeah, you know we're yeah, yeah we're gonna be out. Nope. The game five San Jose won at home five two, so make the series three three to two. They won in double overtime in Vegas, a two one San Jose victory to tie the series at three three. Then in a crazy ass. Game 7, again I missed it but I, I saw everything that happened, I cast me on again so I'm just going to have a few once again, but um, anyway, Vegas was up 3 nothing in the third period, okay? And once I saw that I was like, this game's over, this game is over, I stopped, I stopped watching after the second period not because I thought it was over, but because I did a YouTube video and then I didn't watch until my friend said goal and I was like, okay, so what that, mean, that just means is 3-1. I check and it's 4-3 San Jose, I'm like, what? Anyway, let me get to that. So what led to that is a Vegas five-minute major, which a lot of people seem to not agree on. But in the beginning, I saw it, but then I was like, five-minute major? I don't know. So basically, if you guys don't know, I didn't really know this. If you're on a five-minute major power power play, if you score, it doesn't matter how many times you score, you're still going to be on the power play for the whole five minutes. So San Jose well took advantage of it, scoring four power play goals in the five-minute power play. They made it 3-1, they made it 3-2, they made it 3-3, they made it 4-3. 4-3 San Jose, four minutes after they were down 3-0. Now Vegas did end up tying it late with like 40 seconds left in the third period, so they did tie it to, to forced overtime. But San Jose did win it in overtime with like two, three minutes left to take the series at home. 3-1, 4-3, 4-3, um, being down 3-1 in the series and being down... 3 nothing in the third period of Game 7, so comebacks basically filled that series. So basically, San Jose does win. Vegas is not happy, obviously, but now going into... Yeah, so San Jose wins 3 straight to win, the series 4-3, to three, when being down 3-1, to one, and they obviously came back being down 3-0 three, three to win 5-4 in overtime. So San Jose at home was 3-1, and one, and San Jose on the road was 1-2, and two, if I am correct. 4-3, yeah. So Colorado's series was not as tense. So Calgary won Game One for nothing in Calgary to, to take a to, to, to take a one nothing series lead. Game Two they had a two nothing lead I believe, and then Colorado came back to win three to two to tie the series at one, and I believe that game was in overtime. Game Three Colorado easily won six to two to take a two one series lead. Then in overtime again Colorado won to make it a three one series lead at home. So bo uh, both of those wins were at home. Then I thought that Calgary would force the Game Six, but they did not. Colorado won in Calgary, 5-1, and that's that. Colorado wins four straight after game one loss to take it 4-1 to the series. Colorado on the road was 2-1, and, and Colorado at home was 2-0. So going into the power plays and penalty kill, so this series, these both these series were filled with power plays. San Jose went 8 of 34 on the power play, which is 23.5%, and then San Jose killed 21 of 29 on the penalty kill, so that's 72.4%. Colorado was 5 for 25 on the power play, which is 20% even, and Colorado killed a 17 of 22 on the penalty kill to make it a 77.2% penalty kill, so Colorado's penalty kill was better, and San Jose's power play was better. So going into the regular season records, Colorado was 38, 30, and 14, San Jose was 46, 7, 27, and 9, going into the season series. I have no idea what days these were played because I was looking up, I could not find it, so all I know is that San Jose was 3-0 in the season series against the Avs. The first game was a one-goal win for San Jose, I believe 4-1, 5-4 after they had a, after blowing a 4-1 lead, a 5-1 lead, sorry. Game 2, Sharks won 4-3, and Game 3, a 5-1 win. Again, I don't know how many like games were in San Jose or Colorado, I don't know which ones were what days, but that, uh, that's that. Going into the playoff records, Colorado was 4-1, and, and San Jose is 4-3. Four, four I, I put 4-2, it's San Jose's 4-3, and, and San Jose has home ice, and, and the series will start two nights from now, Friday night. The time, I think, to be determined still. 
So the skinny. So the, the San Jose Sharks and Colorado Avalanche will face off in the Stanley Cup playoffs for the fifth time, first since 2010. Game one of the, West, the Western Conference second round is at SAP Center on Friday, which is of course to be announced. The time. The Sharks defeated the Golden Knights 5-4 in overtime of Game 7, rallying after trailing 3-0 in the third period and came back down from a 3-1 in the series to advance to the second round for the second straight season and third time in the past four. It, it's a special group, San Jose coach Peter De, De Bauer said. We rallied like that all year at different points, even early in the series here when we were, we, we were down 3-0 in Game 2. People have written them off or down and out. There's a lot of belief in there. The Avalanche, who were the second wild card, who were the second Western wild card, won four straight first round games against the Flames after losing four nothing in Game One. San Jose outscored Colorado fourteen to nine and won two one goal games in the regular season. They're a real good team, a one hundred point team. Avalanche coach Jared Be Bednar said, "A big, strong, fast, lots of shooters, mobile defensemen. They're getting their goaltending now. They're a tough team, no question. They've given us trouble all year." San Jose and Colorado have split their previous four playoff series. The Sharks won the past two, including a six-game victory in the 2010 first round. The Avalanche have not not played since Friday, but said they don't think the long, the long layoff will be a factor. I think everybody's mind is in the right place. Center Nathan McKenna said, "No one's comfortable and no one's satisfied. It's it's one round. I think the West is wide open." So going into some game breakers for the Sharks, they had four players score at least 30 goals during the regular season. Joe, Joe Pavelski, 38, Thomas Hurdle, 35, Timo Meyer, 30, and Evander Kane, 30 as well. Hurdle and Logan Couture led San Jose in the first round with six goals each. No one else had more than two. Eric Carlson led them in points with nine, all assists. Brent Burns, with, who led an NHL defenseman in the regular season with 83 points, 16 goals, 67 assists, had four points, one goal, three assists. And for the Avalanche, McKinnon. Uh, Gabriel Land Landeskog and Miko Ransonen carry the Avalanche during the regular season, combining for 21 points, 9 goals, 12 assists in the 5 games against the Flames, and were a combined plus, mi plus a negative 7. The defenseman Tyler Berry, 5 assists, and Cole and Kale McCarr, 1 goal, 1 assist, who made his NHL debut in, game debut in Game 3, also could be Kalos in the second round. So for goaltending, for the, for the Sharks, after Martin Jones allowed 13 goals on 80 shots in, in games 1-4 to four and was pulled twice, he made, the save on one, and one, he made the save on 122 of 129 shots, 946 save percentage with San Jose facing elimination in games 5-7. to seven. That included th 30 saves in a 5-1 win in game 5, a 5-2 win in game 5, and a Sharks record 58 saves in a 2-1 double overtime win in game 6. Jones made 34 saves, saves in Game 7. Backup Aaron Dow is 0-1 and has allowed 7 goals on 64 shots in 4 NHL playoff games, all in relief. For the Avalanche, Philip Grubauer was 4-1 with a 1.90 goals against average and 9.39 save percentage against the Flames. This followed his strong end to the regular season where he went 9-2-2 with a 1.4 GAA, a 9.56 save percentage, and 3 shutouts in his final 14 games. The backup, Semyon Varlamov, did not play in the first round. He was 20, 19, and 9 with a 2.87 goals against, a 909 save percentage, and two shutouts in the regular season, and is 13 and 13 with a 2.57 goals against, a 915 save percentage, and two shutouts in 26 NHL playoff games. So for some numbers to know, the Sharks, they're 8 for 34 on the power play in the playoffs, and have allowed two shorthanded goals. They scored four times on a five-minute power play in the third period of Game 7. San Jose gave up eight goals on 24 power play opportunities in games 1-5, to five, but was 5-for-5 five five on the penalty kill in games 6-7, and seven, which is important, obviously. A Barclay Goudreau scored two goals in the first round, each a game winner. Joe Thornton is one assist from 100 in his, in his career in the NHL playoffs. For, for the Avalanche, they were 5-for-25 on the power play in the first round, 25%. Oh, I said 20%, but I guess they're 25%, okay, whatever. 20-25, whatever. M McKinnon had a point on each of the power play goals, two goals, three assists. The Pena penalty kill allowed 5 goals on 22 opportunities, 76.9%, but scored 2 shorthanded goals, each by former Sharks forward Matt Nieto. Colorado ranks, ranks first with 41 shots per game in the postseason. They are last in face-off winning percentage, which are at 40.7. So the injury report for the Sharks, so Pavelski left in Game 7 with an undisclosed injury after he, he was cross-checked by Cody Eakin. His status for Game 1 is unknown. 
forward Michael Haley has missed four games with lower body injury. To be honest, had it not been that injury, I feel like the Sharks would have lost. So despite him being injured, obviously I do feel bad, and obviously I really hope he's okay. It, it did make them go to the second round, if you think about it, because I don't think they would have. It would have been a two-minute power play, which they probably would have scored them to make it 3-1. I'm not going to say it's over, because them having that momentum, they scored four power power play goals. Like I, I think they could have gotten two. One on the power play, one not. And I think they could have made it close. But go, just going off of that, they might not have won. So. so for the Avalanche, defenseman Samuel Girard, who has missed three games with an upper body injury, practiced this week in a non-contact jersey, but there is no time frame for his return. Although Bednar said he could play in game one, forward Derek Broussard missed three games because of an illness, but is expected to play. So coach, Sharks coach Peter DeBoer said, the, the leadership is the best I've ever seen, I've ever been around. Very fortunate as a coach to be driving, to be around people like Joe Thornton and Joe Pavelski. You don't have to say a lot, they are driving the bus. And the Avalanche coach, Jared Bednar, said our guys should be confident based on the way we played down the stretch and in the playoffs. At the same time, we know that San Jose is a really good team and, and we're going to have to play our best. We're going to have to be even better than we were against Calgary in order to beat them. They understand that, but I think that we all believe it's possible if we play the way that we can. That, to me, is the starting point to this series. And my prediction, I'm pretty sure, was like Calgary in 5 or 6, and the Avs turned the script completely and, and they won in 5, so what the hell. So the Sharks will win if they can get more scoring outside of the top line, and Jones plays like he did in the final three games of the first round, and not the first four. The Sharks had five players score at least two goals, um, and nine with at least four points in the first round. Special teams must improve for San Jose to advance. That's true. For the Avalanche, they they will win if they pressure the shark Sharks like they, did with, like they did with the Flames, with more than 40 shots on goal per game. The scoring was spread throughout the top three lines. They likely will need that again if Grubauer, who allowed four goals on 14 shots in 25-59 of a 5-4 loss to, to the Sharks on January 2nd, can keep up his play from the past two months. Colorado should be in good shape. The penalty kill also needs to improve. So basically, there's always always room for the special teams, penalty kill, power play for, for every team, basically. So now going on to my prediction, it does say Sharks in 6 or 7. So again, the third straight series that I feel will go 6 or 7, but you never know. Maybe they'll get swept. I don't see any any sweeps happening in the second round. In the first round, I feel like there's always a lot of game 7s. Like there's, like there's always a few, at least one or two sweeps, and then, uh, and then I feel a lot of them are game 7s, and then I feel some of them are wins in 5 or 6 games. Um, but for this one, for these four series, I do feel they all could go, like, depending on who wins for Carolina and Washington. Washington and the Islanders, I feel that one could also go 5-7, to seven, maybe 5-6, I don't know, we'll, I'll get into that when I do that video. But for now, I do think the Sharks could win in 6-7, or seven, although I will, I will also say that the Sharks can win in 5-6 to six if they play really well. The Avalanche can definitely force a Game 7 had, like, let's say they're down, they can definitely force a Game 7, depending on how they play. But the Avs cannot get comfortable because the Sharks were just down 3-1 to one in the series, and they won 4-3. to three. They came back in the series not only in Game 7, down 3 nothing in the third period, not only that, but they also came back down 3-1 in the whole series. So you cannot, even if the Avs have a 3-1 series lead, just like the ITD did against Calgary, it's not over. Oh, hell no, it's not over. No way. Pff, you're stupid if you think it's over. Nope. So even if you have a 3-1 series lead, if you have a 2-1 series lead, if you have a 2-0 series lead, you're not done. You still need to win another 2, and the other team could could win 4 before you even win the 2. You gotta play good. Every single game, you have to play. Who am I rooting for in this series? I do feel I'm going to root for both teams in a way, because Colorado did take out Calgary, which I don't, like, I don't like them for, but they are like that... I think they're the underestimated team, possibly, because I underestimated them for sure. So I feel like they're the team that, like, I feel like they're the weaker team. Or not the weaker, like, the less expected to win, so I do kind of want them to win. But then I, also at the same time, the Sharks have home ice, and I do want the Sharks to win in a way. At the same time, like, even when the Sharks were down 3-1, I'm pretty sure the hockey guy, I don't know if you guys know his channel, he does previews, reviews, playoff previews, everything. He has like 80,000 subscribers, and, I, and I'm pretty sure when San Jose was down 3-1, he was like Vegas ends us in 5. And, and what happens? Game 7 in San Jose. Game 7 in San Jose. San Jose wins 5-4 after being down 3-0 in the third period. 
So I think San Jose was very underestimated because they also did come back. They did have the help with that five minute major and they kind of got lucky because they scored a shorthanded game winner in the double overtime. So that was pretty lucky, damn. But they did play a really good, that was like a really good game. Like I love that overtime. I was like, damn, I cannot wait for this. this is like this is gonna be. I love that was the first game to reach double o overtime in, in the playoffs. By the way, um, that's the only game that has reached that long or has that has reached that like length of a game. But anyway, guys, I do feel the Sharks could win in five six, but I'm not gonna un underestimate the Abs. Maybe they'll win five five or six. I don't freaking know. They definitely could. It, it depends how both teams play. If they both improve their power play and penalty kill, it could go seven. It all just depends how each team plays, to be honest. Like you can't. It's hard to guess games. For hockey, it's kind of easy. Not really. Apparently, after seeing round one, it's not easy to predict at all. But, like, damn. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And I'm probably not gonna have the next video, the last video, up until tomorrow, just because I need to have the. I, I need to wait for that game to finish, and then I need to wait for the preview to come out, and then I have to do my own little preview of it. So. That's not going to be up until tomorrow, but I am hoping to get four videos up today, at least. The, these three that I just did, and my Leafs, reaction, my Leafs reaction video, and possibly even a Raptors video. Which I believe starts this Saturday, so I should get that up tomorrow or Friday. I'll probably start working on that, on that tonight if I can, but yeah. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.